All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello. This is CNC Festival. Japan meets the West. This is the game conference. We have some amazing projects here today. We have Future Fest. The homie Kadar Poppy's here, and his team, Matt, is over here as well. And then we also have, you guys know what it is, Faha from Equins. Um, hello, Equins. Would you like to introduce yourself? And then we'll turn over to uh, Future Fest after that. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and then go from there. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, thank you for having us here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm here to introduce uh, our uh, project. Um, we read it equine. Equine is uh, equally correct. Um, it's a racehorse um, management game um, which utilizes blockchain technology. Um, so it utilizes the concept of uh, tokens um, and then the non fungible tokens basically correspond to the horses that people can own. And uh, it, it has also some unique features such as the uh, development of the horses age, uh, training of the horses, racing and breeding. Um, but it also uses these token technology to manage the ownership of the horses. Um, so this is the project that was, uses the Cardano blockchain for, this, uh, for these tokens. Um, and uh, it's basically meant to allow people to enjoy the concept of owning um, a digital or virtual racehorse uh, while using the technology to be able to use them in a, in a practical way, but also to maintain the ownership of these uh, tokens. Awesome, awesome. And then Future Fest, feel free to tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure, I'll get started. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Pablo. I'm the co-founder of Future Fest. I'm also the chief partnership officer. Uh, today, we're here with Matt, also our COO. And um, I think Matt could probably get into uh, how what is Future Fest. Yeah, so we throw uh, interactive virtual concerts uh, for music communities. And so what that means is that, you know, we'll beam an artist that's performing on a green screen into these worlds built out in Unity. And what that allows the audience to actually do is to interact with the performance in real time with both the audience and the stage. Um, so we offer two uh, different experiences. Uh, the first one is what we call level one, which is really an interactive live stream. So if you want, if you're, you know, watching from your phone or watching from your you know, desktop, you can actually uh, watch the stream live with a bunch of other friends and actually interact with this. So you can trigger things like fireworks in the scene, make it rain confetti. We have a bunch of these uh, team interactions that are going on. Um, we've actually recreated the Among Us game in one of our in one of our shows. So we have these really custom things tailored to brands and. Uh, and that, that's, that's what you consider our level one experience. Our level two experience is very similar to an actual in-game experience, uh, similar to like a metaverse, as what a lot of people would say, where you can actually play as a character, run around, you know, customize that character, uh, socialize with people, you know, discover things, and also compete in team events. And both these uh, levels actually uh, are happening simultaneously. So, you know, if you're watching the stream, you're actually going to be able to see people playing in the game. And, uh, you know, for example, if level one decides, hey, I'm going to throw a bunch of beach balls in the scene or I'm going to turn on low gravity, all the people in level two that are playing actually get affected by that. So it's a pretty cool experience. And then uh, we kind of uh, marry these two experiences in a, on our platform, uh, on our site, and it's all browser based. Uh, so what we do is we actually cloud stream that level two experience to you. So you don't need to download anything. It's a very accessible experience because that's actually one of the main things we wanted to hit on here is accessibility. And uh, yeah, so if you wanted to, you know, if you want to sit back, watch the stream, you can do that. But if you're like, oh, there's some some crazy cool stuff going on, you can click that button and be in there immediately. And uh, so how do the NFTs actually play into all this? Um, we have, uh, so our NFTs actually act as a, a ticket to some exclusive events. Uh, we, we do a mix of both public and uh, private events um, because we want to get the largest audience for these artists. But at the same time, you know, uh, we have like an a, a, an event with Cascade coming up, for example, and that's one, an exclusive event where you will need to own one of our NFTs to actually attend. Um, the tickets, or the, not the tickets, the NFTs also act as cosmetics. So whatever traits you see, actually you can see in Pablo's uh, background there. For example, if you have that green one on the top right there, you're gonna actually unlock those glowing horns, that cat face, that you know, the scratch screen and that green skin in game. Um, so you know, owning more future bots, you're gonna have more cosmetics to kind of mix and match and play with. Uh, we're really trying to push this, uh, like this almost season pass for virtual events because in the past, virtual events have been notoriously bad. So, you know, how do you add value and how do you change that narrative? So we're trying to give, you know, value to uh, tickets and, you know, we're utilizing NFTs to do that. 
Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to introduce myself for those who don't know who I am. I am Vic from The Inner Order, um, which is our collective project that enjoys the Cardano blockchain. And um, I'm also here with my fellow friend, uh, I got Yuri, uh, and then we also have a translator here, Yuta here. So Yuri, feel free to introduce yourself, tell a little yes. about yourself. Uh, I am Yuri. Union and uh, I am the uh, founder of CNFT Festival and also I'm founder of uh, CNFT's community that bridge the West and Japan, um, overcome the language barrier. And uh, I, I want to spread the uh, uh, wonderful CNFT space uh, to Japanese people. Well, thank you. And Utah, I know you're, you're the interpreter and, trans and <laughs> feel free to say hello so people know you're here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Utah. I'm here to support everybody in the wonderful CNFT world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. So we're going to get started. Um, my, my biggest question to you guys um, as big projects, um, we'll, we'll toss the question first to Equines first and uh, want to ask you like for Equin, uh, Equines, Equines, um, why, did, why did you guys choose Cardano? It's a good question. Um, so any, any good application um, needs to rely on a, let's say, um, good back end or a good backbone and infrastructure. We are um, very convinced that Cardano um, is built in a way that also aligns with our understanding of what makes a good technology. Um, we have a similar science-based, let's say, approach to things. Uh, we believe in the technology and its long-term growth. Um, we believe that te technology that will stay for the future will need to be built properly. And we believe Cardano ticks all those boxes. Now, while we also know Cardano is still in a growing phase, we are happy to grow with it and to achieve that. We also believe Cardano has a long-term approach to growth and adoption. And we believe that that also aligns with our growth. We'd like to be um, an activity or, or an option that becomes mainstream and available to the masses everywhere in the world. We'd not like it to be an exclusive thing. And that also aligns with Cardano's vision. So we believe it's a perfect match in that sense. Uh, we believe that technologically, even with our NFT, uh, token sale, which we already um, concluded last December 2021. Um, it was an excellent um, experience for anyone who participated in that. And that was already a first excellent experience for us in that regards. Um, it's a very solid piece of technology. Um, it will, I believe it will help us grow and release an excellent product for all our users. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that part. Love how your vision kind of matches the same as well with Cardano's. And that's, that's an amazing, that beautiful match as well. Explains why you, as you as a collector, you transition from that to full project lead. Um, for Future Fest, why did you guys pick Cardano? Yeah, I think um, when we were, when we started our company, we started working with a lot of music labels. So um, many of these uh, EDM music labels, um, like and Juna Beats, uh, Space Yacht, Dirty Bird, they were um, bringing their communities into our world. And whenever the, we had, we were working with bigger named artists like Martin Hoger, Arius, um, these larger artists were bringing also their communities into our world. But shortly after the event, they would leave. So people, we weren't retaining any audience, any community. Um, so we found that our biggest problem was that we needed to start building our own community. And uh, myself, what I do on Cardano is I do uh, influencing. I am um, I am probably the first uh, Cardano CNFT TikToker. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and as I started doing that, um, the community welcomed me in. The Cardano community is so strong, and everyone knows each other. It's very tight, and people look out look after one another. And um, when it was time for us to do for Future Fest to do our CNFT project or our NFT project. Uh, we were thinking about a few blockchains, but ultimately I, I knew that Cardano was the right choice for us because I knew that Cardano was the place where people were looking for a product that was willing to take a risk and also grow. And so coming to Cardano for me was easy. Um, I, we did talk about it as a team and ultimately we landed here and with the help of like the Benjamins group, Benjamins club, 
um, we were welcomed in. And now we have a, a really strong community, people that love our future bots, people that believe ultimately in our vision of uh, elevating live streaming events. And now we have people that are actually excited and investing in us very, very early. And we're hoping to, to continue to grow as Cardano grows as well. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So great. Um, so one thing I want to ask about you guys, uh, Future Fest, I know you guys have some really cool game mechanics, but you guys are technically not a metaverse, technically not a game. Can you tell us a little bit about your mechanics? Yeah, actually, I can show you it right now. Um, the team's actually doing a test build this morning. Let's so just I can do actually, it. Uh... If, you can, if you can share it, that'd be, that'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah. So this is actually, uh, let me know if you can see this. This is actually the team testing it out right now, playing in the lab, which is actually a show we're doing a little bit uh, later today, actually. Um, I know this, uh, the stream's in the future, so it'll already be over by then. But I've got my little character here. And on this right hand bar, I actually have all these different customization options. And there's these are things that I actually unlock. So we have a bunch of basic ones that everyone has as a default. But for example, if you own the NFT, they'll actually be unlocked in this version. So I can actually, you know, change my color in real time. You know, I can get a bunch of these different hats. And you know, we have a bunch of these really cool hats of you know these uh, glowing textures and emissions. You know, change your faces. Um, so that's just the customization aspect of it. But there's a lot of other things like, you know, I can run around, spam glow sticks, I can drive around. We have these little <laughs> pinball things. And this is all happening while an artist is performing. And this is a, an example of an artist that's performing that's pre-recorded. Um, but we also like doing live uh, live shows as well. So the artist can actually call things out. The, the players can actually, you know, respond to them in real time and uh, things like that. Um, we actually just added, you know, graffiti sprays to this to this thing. We have bounce pads, so it's it's a very uh, game like experience. And this is actually being cloud streamed to my browser right now. So all I had to do was just, you know, create a Future Fest account, uh, click a button, and I'm in. And if you have an NFT, all you need to do is just connect it like any other wallet connection, similar to like if I was buying something on JPEG store, you know, just uh, uh, adding your wallet there. And this um, also, yeah. uh, like, just to just to add on to it, uh, what Matt's saying is that it's cloud streamed, so you can use almost any laptop or computer. It doesn't matter what the model is. Uh, you're going to be provided a high fidelity, quick, you know, experience. Um, Zoom that we're using right now that you're watching is probably it's a little laggy, but uh, when you're actually playing the game, it's very smooth, very fast, and it's very easy to get into very accessible for most people in the world. And on our roadmap later this year, we're gonna move on to mobile because we understand how important it is for people to be able to use their phones to get into the world. Yeah, I mean, since it is cloud streamed, you're actually able to get that same experience on a mobile phone. So you actually be able to play the game higher you know, quality than most web browser based uh, applications. So, yep. That's very cool. And then I believe you need to own an NFT or a future bot to be able to get into the uh, platform or the other. Uh, we the, actually, um... yeah. So we actually have a mix of both private and public events. Um, so the, the private ones are like, you know, the big exclusive ones like Cascade or maybe in the future, we have, you know, a few collaborations of other other groups. But for the most part, we want to make it really accessible. We, we actually want to act as a gateway for people to actually join the Cardano community. So we're actually making the platform open to anyone. Um, so if you join one of our public shows, you can actually be a character. You can experience, you know, both level one or, or level two experiences. And uh, I mean, what we're trying to accomplish here is like, you know, for example, if I We've done, we're, we have a bunch of collaborations planned with like, you know, Project 2090, Angel Baby Hit Squad. So for example, if you own an Angel Baby Hit Squad NFT, you're actually going to unlock Angel Wings in game. And the, the kind of experience we want people to have is like, oh, you know, you got this really cool cosmetic. How do I get it? You know, it's like, oh, I need to own this NFT. And like that clicks in a lot of people's heads, you know, that, that makes sense. Um, so like we want to, so like with that in mind, we're not only on Cardano, we're doing a lot of collaborations with, you know, cross-chain stuff, Ethereum, because we want to bring people to this platform as much as possible. And we think that makes a lot of sense. That's awesome. I mean, how, cool, how cool is it if you have, um, you know, our first steps to interoperability, like real interoperability um, by having communities being in the same space and joining an artist, um, you know, we're working with Ethereum, Solana, you know, uh, Cardano, and having those communities all show up to the same place to watch an event and have a shared experience, that, that, that's the same kind of magic that you get at a real life event. And uh, that's what we're hoping to bring to our virtual events. 
That's awesome. That's super awesome. Thank you. I'm going to turn over to Equins and kind of want to understand um, how they're going to be building their game. So for Equins, um, tell me a little more about your game mechanic. I believe it's a horse racing game. Is that correct? Yes, correct. So the way we're actually approaching this game is it does have a lot of parallels to um, um, actually a bunch of parallels. So number one, there's um, real life horse races. And, and that's one, let's say, reference, main reference. The other reference is um, some existing race for schemes have some similar also mechanics in a certain way, but are done differently. Whereas um, you might have seen an arcade game, which, which is actually a big inspiration that we've had. And I think it's very popular in Japan since this is one of the audiences, is there used to be um, a, a horse game in the arcades where you print a token and then that token is basically your horse. And you can take it to any other machine. It's connected online. And then if you scan your token, you can get your same horse and race against the people sitting on the bench with you. So that's an existing arcade machine that used to be in Japan and in the world. Um, that's a very good reference because that token is actually a non-fungible token. It's an NFT. It's just printed on paper. It's not a digital one. So we are replicating something similar in a way. It's just that people are owning the token on the blockchain, but they also own that horse, which they have. Um, the game mechanic itself is not meant to be controlling the horses or the jockeys. Um, while that might be interesting to have as a metaverse world, let's say experience, and those are things we are not excluding and it might be added at some point to explore and use your horses and interact with them. But the game itself, the races, you don't touch the horses. Your role is as a manager or as the owner of the horses. And then you basically select your horse that you want to race, select the track you want to race them in and which race you want to enter them. Um, you will have, uh, you will see which course it's, it's joining on. Um, you basically can train your horses. You can choose to breed them if you like to, but it's those management decisions. That's why we're careful to call it a racehorse management game because it's okay. about strategy. It's about deciding um, how you'd like to grow your horses, how you'd like to put their training regime, what you'd like the horse to specialize in. You can also choose the jockeys and you want to identify which jockey works best with your horse. You want to figure out whether your horse does well on the shorter tracks, on the longer tracks, whether it does well in a more crowded race or in a less crowded race with a big field. Um, these are kind of the, 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 the questions that a player would need to figure out. Um, for a breeder, they would want to know what their horse um, basically stats are, how they grow, what they do, um, their colors, their interactions, and to understand what genetics they can pass on and to also decide those. Because choosing um, a, a male and a stallion basically chooses what your offspring will be. So it's another whole game and also specializing there is another aspect because somebody could become a breeder who specializes in high endurance horses, for example, and they can become, so you want a high endurance horse, you go to this stable or this breeder who always produces consistent horses that are good at that. And there's a whole economy and, the, and, and let's say experience uh, throughout that. That's where I bring in the reference of the real life racehorse industry. Um, we don't want to create a game that's built on pure imagination. And we are lucky to have an existing physical racehorse industry. It has its pros, it has its cons, but it's a working system. So it's a great reference. Instead of reinventing the wheel with something completely new, we still have tools and technology to, to, to improve things, to create greater things and improvement and to, to maybe add a vision to it. Uh, we have the convenience of it being digital, so you can do things easier and faster, obviously. We don't want people to need to clean their stables or, or to have to monitor the feeding their horses. But at the same time, we also don't want to make it so, so much fantasy that it basically breaks the game. So we take a lot of reference from that. One of our founders is um, a professional racehorse breeder. He's been working with horses more than 20 years. So you will see a lot of the touches in the design are based on the advice from professionals in the field who basically tell us, wait, 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 you don't do this in a race, you actually do this. That doesn't make sense. 
we want to appeal to a target also of real life race sports lovers, but we also want to make this more accessible to everyone because that's a big commitment. We'd like to people to enjoy this experience without having to have so much of that commitment and to maybe share it with more of the world. Okay. So how you guys, with speaking on that aspect of making more available to everyone, are you guys building your game on the web site or? Um... Yes, yes. We, okay. um, so, so, so this, um, I believe will be released uh, in, in May. So by that time that will probably be announced. Um, so I, I can share this now. We are actually uh, working on developing both a web application and a mobile application. So it, okay. it's gonna be a, a website and a mobile app. And, and those will basically allow you to interact in everything. And it's basically um, the way we are designing it, it might um, make some sense is we have basically three layers of the game. So there's the front end, which is the app, which is all the user interfaces, user experience. Um, similar to what uh, the guys at uh, FutureFest showed, there's some absolutely amazing stuff. Um, it's, it's the interface, it's the interactions and the screens. Um, there's another part, which is on top of that, I'd say, is actually viewing the, the races themselves, um, also viewing the stables, and those are the 3D elements which actually need the 3D visualization. We're taking a slightly different approach. We're still going for the web-based or mobile-based, let's say, viewer experience. Um, but then we are basically designing these as components which fit into the user interface. And those are gonna be um, 3D viewers which are developed and optimized all this time just as a, let's say, sub project of equine just to optimize how the race looks, the interactions, interactivity, um, controlling the cameras, sharing the races, interacting with them and all kinds of stuff like that. And then the third part is the back, back end, which is basically um, all the, the, the smart contracts and the blockchain development part. So awesome. it's basically viewing races on top of a user interface of the game itself. And then that has a smart contract and blockchain interaction. Each one of them we handle actually as a separate sub project and they all interconnect to each other. So we're also managing them as three different projects to pull off the whole equine application. Um, this made the most sense as it, in terms of development approach because each one has its own skill set. You have your, your, your web app and mobile app guys specializing in, in apps. Um, you have the 3D viewer specialized, let's say, um, development, and then you have the smart contracts. So these three sets of skills kind of have their own teams. Um, the, maybe time to also just touch on the equine development team. So um, the, 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 the developer, let's say founders or the core team that started this concept is actually four of us. Um, myself as uh, number one, um, a, a co-founder. Um, I'm also, let's say the, the concept um, initiator along with Zach, another of our founders. Um, I also act, act uh, as the creative director and the game designer. Uh, so these are basically my specialties in that regard. Um, we have our, our, uh, our CTO and the tech guy is uh, Nicholas Nick uh, Fencemaker, um, who uh, I understand has been handling smart contract, uh, sorry, um, the NFT basically drops for Future Fest as well, just as a matter of coincidence, who are uh, with us in this in here. So Fencemaker is actually a co-founder of Equine. Um, he is a, a scientific developer He's been doing scientific programming for years professionally. Um, he works with, um, he's a physicist. He learned physics and engineering and he's a coder by profession. So he was the perfect partner to develop things like um, race simulation, um, the race design, um, uh, modeling basically the genetics and the physical and mental attributes of the horses, um, things like DNA simulation, and having that for the breeding engine. So he's basically the mastermind of this. Um, and he has that scientific background to basically specialize in all this kind of simulation and, uh, and, and developing this. Um, then number three is uh, Marek is our, our third co-founder. Um, he's in, in planning analysis and strategy. He's been in this field also as a professional. So he's our also, let's say corporate mind 
um, as well as uh, also our, our eyes basically on the community, the growth, the planning and the strategy. And then our fourth, last but not least is Zach. Zach is uh, the horse specialist and expert. He also is a Cardano and NFT enthusiast. We met, all four of us actually met through this community. Um, and uh, awesome. we basically got to know each other there. So that's the four of us. But then the, the, the team that de develops equine has grown so much. So we have different pools of expertise. Some have been hired as full-time, some are being hired as part-time, but we have teams of 3D artists who have created already the Pioneer NFT collection and are now creating things like the racetracks um, and, and other details. Um, we have a team of, uh, we're actually um, hiring an expert delivery team to do the web app. Uh, so that's basically externalized, but we are also uh, adding our own in-house team to basically get to grips with what's being developed and to maintain it going forward. Um, so that's another team. We had a music composer on the team to create again, the, the original soundtrack, the music for equine. Um, and some might have seen those in the, in the, in the jockeys that we have. Um, and then we basically, so that's the creative team. We have the developer team. We have a 3D viewer expert who's also on the team. Um, he's basically one of the, we are developing, actually creating the 3D viewer on Babylon JS, if anyone is, uh, uh, knows that uh, uh, technology. So um, our developer on Babylon JS is actually um, one of those contributors to the base code of Babylon JS. He's a, a, a one of the builders of the Babylon JS, let's say, infrastructure or, or or tech, let's say, stack itself. So he was a perfect match to build this. Also a very bright guy, um, also into physics. So we have a very, let's say, excited team that's uh, looking forward to uh, create something extra cool for everyone. That's awesome. That's that's a lot more people than I expected. Um, but I appreciate it. Now that people know that you guys have an extensive network of people you guys are working together to build this 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 vision you guys started with and now it's going to expand more and more so no appreciate it appreciate you just sharing that about what you guys are doing and who's behind the project itself um, i'm going to turn this question over to um future fest um and then i'll probably ask you probably the same question as well um for future fest um what are some challenges you guys discovered on your way um just building on cardano this is just for any upcoming um gaming developers in japan um yeah, for what, what kind of challenges did you guys encounter um, future, future best? Uh, yeah, so actually, the, I think one of the biggest challenges off the top of my head is uh, the user experience of the of the minting. Um, I only bring that up because when we're when we're building this out, we like to we're trying to make this make sense for like the general public, right? So we, we like to compare a lot of our ideas like, hey, this is a season pass, you know, that you can buy or here's a ticket that comes with you know, items. And one of the challenges that we had was, uh, even with this cascade show that we're marketing, is like, how do we sell the NFTs uh, in a way to like the general public? Because it's always about onboarding them. You know, it's, it's a very, uh, it's very, it's it's almost, it's not daunting because it takes like five minutes to create a, you know, a Cardano wallet. But for a lot of people, it's very daunting, you know? So that whole experience of like, okay, I got to, you know, go to a Discord. I got to, you know, type in a vending address, send out the money, you know, or create the wallet, you know, get, get money from an exchange first. We've been trying to find ways to make that experience as seamless as possible. And I think that was, that's probably the biggest challenge as, as far as the, um, the actual game development side goes. Um, there's, there's been a lot of learnings there, but there hasn't been a challenge as far as like, you know, dealing with the Cardano blockchain at all. So. Awesome. Okay. That helps a lot. And then for you um, guys, Equins, um, what challenges do you guys encounter when you're building the game on Cardano? So as Matt said, I think one of the main things that if we want to be um, successful in big growth is to reduce friction, is to reduce the user friction, is to, use, to reduce the steps that people need to take. That's absolutely important. But I think that there's so many people invested in this space that, that will good ways to do this will, will evolve and will be available. For us, I think the, 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 the most simple way to say it is I think we've been spoiled by the NFT technology in a way that basically I will try to simplify this. NFTs make it super, 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 super easy to publish digital items, to sell them, and to distribute them. 
okay? The takeaway is that it doesn't make everything else magically easier. So when you're spoiled by it, it being so easy to sell the tokens, you might sometimes realize that, wait a second, there's so many other things you need to do which aren't super easy. I think that's very important for everyone to realize when they are embarking on a mission to create a game, that if you need to make a game, there's while NFTs will save you this part, and it's an excellent solution for publishing items, for selling items, and for distributing them to their owners. But you need to think of everything else beyond that. And that depends really on what else you're doing, but it's basically going to be um, your game, the creation, the, the team, the hiring, the finance, uh, the, the, the legal stuff. Um, all of this is still there, and you still need to do it. Um, maybe those who are not making a game or just making a collectible drop, they could easily just do that drop. They got the sale, it's in their pocket, it's done. And that's much easier because there's no more to do, really. Um, but the moment you want to build that into something longer, sustaining, you need maintenance, you need development, you're going to need to do hiring, you're going to need to do. So these are things to, to think about. Um, indeed, developers who are going to have their own small team and going to just micromanage it they probably can do it easier because they can still do things on a personal basis, I would say. But the moment you want to do things as a company and you want to, to go through that, then you just need to have all the hurdles of, of starting a company and, and, and growing that to a full project. Um, I think that's actually, to us, was one of the bigger challenges. Um, but but it, it's, it's, it's a real challenge for anyone who wants to grow something big, at least. Um, it's, it's good to be mindful of that. Okay, awesome. Um, just another question for you as well, Equines. Um, so how are you guys integrating NFTs with the current blockchain, number one? And number two, are you guys building a metaverse? Good questions. So the first question about the NFTs. So the NFTs reside, I'm not sure if I understand your question, but if I do. So yeah, how do you integrate they basically, it with the blockchain? they live on the blockchain. So they Got are it. native tokens that are on the blockchain. The blockchain is used basically to keep them. It's the decentralized, let's say, ledger where everyone owns these tokens on their own wallets and not our own. So the whole idea is that when you own a horse, it's not really something that's on our server or on our platform. It's something that you own, you can trade any way you want to, you can gift it to someone we can't really lock you out of your horse or, or anything. It, it's a good question for games because gamers sometimes ask, what's the benefit of NFTs and, and what's different? And, and we've, we already have items in our games. So why are we adding another layer? I have a lot of gamer friends who ask this question. I think it's very relevant. They say, you're adding more complexity. You're asking me to bring a wallet. You're asking me to pay for stuff, but I already have this in my games. And the answer is basically more freedom more control. You don't have to sell your whole account to transfer something. You can just sell one thing. You can sell two things. You can get something very exclusive in your own account, but if you don't need it, you can give it to someone. While in games, usually you cannot do that. Then the second thing is uh, interoperability. That, that, for example, FutureFest mentioned, if you own an, an Angel Squad NFT, you can get something in FutureFest. While if it wasn't an NFT system, you'd basically need to go through so many agreements just to be able to have these integrate on different digital rights management systems. And you need to have a link and you need to create a whole new thing. While when we are all on the blockchain, we can all interact with each other the moment that we decide that we have an agreement. Actually, even if we don't have an agreement, people can do it. It's just not nice to do, maybe illegal in some cases. But it's, it's, it's a, a big feature to have. Um, the second question, um, I, 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 can you remind me? Are you guys building, are you guys building a metaverse? Uh, it's, a, it's a tough question. So no is the short answer. Um, but the, the probably more detailed answer is, it depends on what you consider a metaverse. If a metaverse is yeah. multiple realities, then one of the realities is the race horse track then yes, we are making race course tracks that will exist. And if somebody puts that in a land somewhere, they can view that race in that land. Uh, so if you, if you broaden your mind to that 
concept of different verse universes or, 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 or multiverses, then that's a metaverse. If you're talking about the typical character and avatar that you can walk around with, not initially, it's not our core platform. We definitely have an interest to consider building it into something like that. We have also a vision for having content creation where we have our own storyline, exploration. But every time I, we want to delve into that, we'd rather deprioritize that first put priority in creating the, the, the racing and the core aspects. But there is a vision for, for having basically exploring areas, unique areas, um, a storyline that evolves, people interacting with that. Um, so that concept is there, it's just not a promise yet. It's, it's more of a, something we're exploring. That makes sense, that makes sense. Well, thank you so much. I'm gonna go over to Future Fest. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys, um, how are you guys linking your NFTs? And that Fahad can explain to us that NFTs do live on a blockchain. So for a lot of people that don't know, um, NFTs are part of the Cardano blockchain. Um, so for your game concept for Future Fest, how are you guys linking those NFTs with your game, but also interacting with the blockchain? Yeah, so the way that actually, so the way we interact with the blockchain is pretty simple. It's just just noting or just seeing that you actually have the NFT in your wallet. Um, so like our structure goes, we have the, you know, the future fest account at the top. So you create, you know, a normal user account, email, password, and then you can connect as many wallets as you want. And uh, that actually allows us a lot of flexibility to be like, hey, you know, connect any Cardano wallet you have, but also Ethereum wallets or, you know, in the future Solana wallets, you know, just, you can just keep adding them. So um, that way it allows us, you know, have some, a little bit of interoperability there, but also it's, it's pretty easy to just be like, hey, you know, if, if I connect my wallet and we detect that you have any of our collaborating partners, NFTs in them, we'll, you know, do the respective action in our game. So, you know, so unlock, you know, new cosmetics or, um, act as a ticket even, you know, it's like, for example, like, you know, Angel Baby Hit Squad or Veggie Maid, some of our collab partners, we've actually given them ticket access for some, you know, specific events. So it's like, hey, now, if, even if you don't own one of our uh, NFTs, that other NFT from one of our partners actually acts as a ticket now. So um, it allows us to do a lot of cool things like that. Very cool. And then for interoperability, how, you guys, how are you guys planning on support multiple wallets on your website? How does that work? Uh, yeah, I mean, mostly it's just the same as, you know, adding, you know, NAMI support or CC Vault or maybe it's called Eternal now, <laughs> but essentially it's uh, just adding the integration. So like one of the easy ones for Ethereum is introducing MetaMask and uh, Nifty Gateway, which they have, you know, uh, great documentation already. So those are, are super easy to add. Um, but yeah, I mean, our, our actual application is built on the blockchain. We use Unity, which is this, uh, you know, a, a game engine. So that allows us to just, you know, call the, you know, call those APIs, get that, that information from the, the metadata. And it's, it's super easy on our end. Awesome. That makes sense. Um, so are you guys, uh, I gotta ask you guys this, are you guys building a metaverse? <laughs> if I could, if I could just touch on that real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the idea of using uh, the, the tokens on whichever blockchain, uh, I think we think it's important because there are so many communities that exist now that are huge. If you think of, um, you go over to Ethereum and you look at the Board Ape Yacht Club or, you know, any other projects that are on Solana. Let's, for example, Steve Aoki has a community that lives on Solana. Um, you know, those NFTs don't necessarily have the utility to act as a ticket or to provide in-game items or anything. So what we're doing is providing what we call a backwards utility. Like, just because they own something, now we can read it. Now we can assign something for that ownership to that project which I think is gonna be a game changer for many projects because now it gives them just added value. Now, um, you know, if they go to one of our events, they also get, you know, a uh, in-game item for being at the event and an access a ticket. And on top of it, I think the most favorite thing about every NFT community is that we like to show off our NFTs. So I think just being able to be like, hey, that guy has a claymate or this guy has a veggie mate, or this guy has a, you know, a, a space yacht, space pass, like, that, that stuff is important and that stuff is giving yourself a, an identity online virtually in our events. And um, I think that's what makes it fun to go to a, a real music festival too, wearing a funny costume or wearing something, you know, uh, showing off your personality. And we're, now we're just moving it on to a digital world. Are we a metaverse? Yeah. We, we would call ourselves a metaverse. Yeah. I don't think. Um, we think that uh, for our team, we have really high standards on what a metaverse is. Um, when we think metaverse, we think 
you're wearing a VR goggle, you're interacting with the world, uh, you know, you have a haptic suit on so you can feel things. I, we have a very high standard for what a metaverse is. And um, I, I think we're on our way back to that. Future Fest actually started six years ago as a VR company. So we've been, we were working in VR and we pivoted to what we're doing now because it's more accessible. Um, at the time, six years ago, people didn't have the VR goggles, they didn't have the access to get in. So we pivoted over to this during the quarantine to start working with our partners and our friends that worked in the EDM community to start broadcasting them in, in our level one shows and now our level two shows. But um, we're hoping to make the, make the switch back to VR and head to our, what we call our level three. And our level three is VR. Level four is the matrix. So <laughs> we hope to get back to, we yep. hope to go to someday. We, we will get there. Uh, but uh, right now, what a metaverse is, what people, you know, uh, land sales and um, not being exclusive and, and, and like those things don't really match with our mission. So we wouldn't really say that we are. But for marketing purposes, um, you know, saying you're a metaverse helps a, a new project um, with attention. But yeah, we, I don't think we could say that. Matt, would you have any words? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I think you hit a lot of the, the points. Uh, actually, just going back to the other point, Fahad hit on beautifully, which is like just the fact that you know all this interoperability. You, it, since they live on the blockchain, you don't need to you know work with their internal systems. So I just want to like call that because that's that's exactly that's exactly right. But yeah, as far as the metaverse goes, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we're a metaverse. I think there needs to be persistent virtual worlds that you know people can go to all the time. True interoperability. I don't think any project is there yet. I mean, you you look at I mean, metaverses already exist at the moment, right? Like, if the people that feel like it's not there yet have never played an MMO, I feel like you know, like like a World of Warcraft or all these other ones. I mean, they already exist, but um, yeah. But I think the level there is, uh, I mean, like part of our mission is to make a really fun experience. Like, our foundation isn't fun, um, so that's kind of what we're focusing on first. And you know, at the moment, we are event based, so uh, yeah, um, yeah, not not a metaverse yet, but maybe in the future. I like that. I like that. All right. So um, I just want to turn it to just give the Japanese audience something that they probably would love to hear is um, I'll probably ask you guys first, Future Fest. Is there um, any advice you give to the Japanese community or any words of wisdom? Oh, let's see. Um... Yeah, I would say innovation, you know, trying to f find like, you know, what, what's some like really co cool utility that makes a lot of sense, you know, uh, think about your your reach, the audience that it's going to attract. Um, I know people bring up the, uh, the trilemma, which is like, uh, I actually totally forgot what the actual trilemma was, but it's, you know, like, how do you evolve your project as it goes on? You know, is it, is it just an art project? Uh, is it more than an art project? How do you keep evolving with the audience and keep providing value? Um, I'm a firm believer that, uh, like NFT's value will come from the experience that it provides in the future, you know, more than just the artwork, because at the end of the day, you know, if people are like, oh, okay, this NFT allows me to join this community or this NFT allows me to go to this event or this NFT allows me to do this. I think that's where the, the value lies um, and more, more so than just the PFP project. Um, so yeah, I would just say, you know, like watch out for utility, watch out for, or, or you know, at least keep those things in mind um, when you build it out. I think, um, I would say, um, kind of piggybacking off what Faha said, um, that, that there, there are so many more things that need to go into creating an NFT project. Um, uh, if it's more than just art, especially since we're talking about gaming. Um, we, I've met a lot of projects that skip on marketing. They skip on the marketing portion. They, they don't do promotions. They, they aren't working with the community to figure out what they actually want. And I think that those things are really important when you're building something out, um, a company. Uh, because it, if it is just art, it's great to just do art. I, I love, I'm a part of the Benjamins Club, so I love buying artwork that's on the blockchain. But when I look for something that has utility, I, I need to know, is the team doing what they're supposed to be doing? Is their development actually happening? Is the marketing actually happening? Like all these building blocks are important to make sure that you're uh, company and your project is successful. So please don't skip out on all the other things that are important too. Uh, marketing is just as important as development. And so you have to keep that in mind when um, creating. And also, 
I think uh, just to add on, collaborations are great. I love collaborating with other projects, but that shouldn't be the only thing that's holding up your project. You should be, it should be working on its own steam, on its own ideas, on its own fundamentals and building towards something instead of just, um, you know, uh, we're a new project, so we wanna collaborate with Equin to do this thing. Like that only goes so far. At the end of the day, what are you building and, and why does it matter? Um, because that's what's most important to, I think, the community. Awesome. I'm going to turn over to Equins. Um, is there any advice or wisdom you can pass to some new people that want to build something on Cardano, especially NFT projects? Sure. I actually, uh, I'll, I'll put them in, in two categories, if, if you don't mind. So number one is for the gamers and for those who are thinking about NFTs and, and, and what they do and if it's worth trying or looking at or testing. And I say, you guys have to go and try it. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely effective. It makes so much sense. People are so used to owning digital items which belong to different companies which they actually don't own and they can be locked out whenever that software is not supported or when that becomes old. This technology allows people to own their own items. It's extremely beautiful. It's liberating. It allows people to share their art, to publish their creations, to own their things and collect them. It's very efficient because you don't need to manage your collection. It's in your wallet by itself. You can easily trade your things. You can easily sell them if you don't need them. You can easily swap with your friends without needing a company to be in the middle. So it's very beautiful. If you are not sure if you should try NFTs, go and figure it out. Try something simple. Look at something you like. I know that in Japan, collecting is a very big activity. I'm surprised that NFTs are not popular yet. Um, I think the same way you go and buy a cute keychain in a small shop and you keep it in your room on a hanger or in a drawer, go and find a cute NFT and buy it and see if it makes you happy. And then if it does, go and see the rest of the world there. I think it's a really good uh, thing to try. Um, for the creators, I would say, and I know there's a lot of talent in making um, games in Japan. There's a lot of individual developers who are very talented. Um, look at uh, Toho, for example. It's a very famous game and there's a big scene for it. Um, I think the game creators should not be scared of the concept of NFTs because it gives them a platform where you don't need to depend again on a company to give you services. You can own a big part of that and it allows you so many options because you can then create limited items, you can create collectibles, you can create different things. And you don't need to complicate that NFT part to confuse with the game itself. Think of it as digital items. If you want to have an item in your game, if you want to have a ticket, if you want to have um, a character, if you want to have um, equipment, if you want to have a, a poster, all of those can be NFTs. But that doesn't mean you change your game. It's just a technology that you can add to your game. It allows the user to interact in a different way. It gives you more options. And then you don't need to create something complicated on a web server to host your items you can make it in a much more simple way. Now, is it that simple? No, but it also means you need to find somebody experienced or to learn a little bit about the technology. But I would say it's definitely much more simple than learning how to make your own token system, make your own backend, make it secure. That will be probably difficult to make for your own game. But what's easier to do is either to hire a professional or add to your team or to learn how to issue your own tokens based on a standard and then how to link it to your game system. And that's much, much easier. It gives you so many more options to make your game more enjoyable and it gives you room to go. 
that's my advice. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate that. For equines, um, I believe you guys have fence baker, um, but how did you guys um, develop it? Are you guys using, I know there's a specific code language you use for Cardano. Are you guys interacting by using Plutus or Haskell or, or um, is there any, or how are, you, how, are you guys, how are you guys coding it essentially? Um, the, is it a game encoded with, with what, with a program language? How, how does that development it's, language it's, work, at least for your guys' project? It's actually much more simple. So if you look at a game project using NFTs, it's nowhere as complicated. It's not as complicated as like a decentralized exchange where you have the responsibility of having so many users at the same time interacting with, let's say, um, a backend. Um, in this case, it's much more straightforward. So the core component will probably, and I'm, I'm, I'm not the core developer, so I'm probably not the best person to talk technology, um, but I can probably simplify it. So one part is just linking a wallet to your game. And that's also what I believe FutureFest are doing. Um, so when you link your wallet, you're basically just telling the game that this person who owns these NFTs is using the game. So for example, for equine, that would mean that this user owns horse number 517. They also own the jockey number 713 and, and so on, okay? And then it can tell it also that this is what it looks like. This is what you can do. And then the second part for us is basically the interaction, which um, the transaction to enter a race, the transaction to do breeding, these transactions are also relatively simple because all they do is you enter your horse NFT into a race. So that's a smart contract where you put it in that race, you subscribe it, and then it's basically in that race. And then when it's done, you get the reward of it. Uh, the beauty of it and why it's decentralized is that this code can then be audited by an, uh, uh, somebody outside they can make sure that the race smart contract is fair. They can make sure that nobody is changing the code to basically make it unfair to any players. Um, and then you basically don't need an operator to handle it. It's a smart contract that handles these transactions. So those are the transactions or the, the elements that use the, the blockchain for, for equine. Um, and and, and that's, that's basically the part. The rest of it is, basically the same as creating a game where you have the visuals, you have the interactions, you have the menus, you have the user interface, you have the screens, the tutorials, and, and all of that. That's the same as, as any other game. The only part is we basically treat the blockchain as um, a more secure decentralized backend or database where some things will be in our database, which are the user accounts um, and all of that. But then the other part is the, the part that we um, interact with, which is the, let's say, secondary or other database, which is basically the, the blockchain. And, and that's one that people use with their own wallets and their own interactions. Perfect, that makes sense. Appreciate you simplify it for the audience. Uh, helps out a lot. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to FutureFest. Um, I wanna ask you guys pretty much a similar question. Yeah, so actually, so our CTO, Jimmy, is the one that is learning all those uh, development languages, like Plutus and Haskell. And I believe he's joining the like the Plutus Alliance. I know they have like some kind of program that you can actually join where they, it's kind of, I don't know if it's like a boot camp style Plutus, thing. Yeah, it should be a Plutus uh, Pioneer program. program. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. Yeah, he actually, so. Um, our CTO, Jimmy, he actually, uh, he was studying Haskell before he got into Cardano. He just like, he, he, he on his own, loves this is why he's our CTO. He loves learning new yep. languages, new languages, and uh, he was really, really into it. And the reason why he wanted to work with us was because we're doing our NFTs on Cardano, and now he's become like a uh, mini genius, and is just you know has picked up all these skills along the way, which is really great for us and for him. You know? Yeah, uh, but on like the game development side, it's uh, I mean that hasn't changed, which is actually probably kind of comforting to know as a, as a game developer that um yeah sure i mean the interactions for a linking like digital items to the game that's, that's that's just like one uh bridge there but everything else for game development mostly stays the same um there's not there's not much of the changes there okay and you guys are using unity so obviously i'm guessing you're using c sharp for coding uh stuff that yep. you needed to do a lot of stuff so yeah there you go so you're using unity 
plus the back end, which is Plutus and all that stuff. That's that's awesome. So um for the record, yeah. since I, I skipped that fact, um our CTO Nick is a Plutus pioneer first cohort. So he's okay, he's awesome. also using Plutus. He also knows that. Um and we are using Babylon JS for the 3D visualization from Got a tech it. point Got of it. view. Is there a reason why you guys picked Babylon JS? Just curious. It's one of the few uh, WebGL browser-based, um, let's say, options which make the app accessible. Um, we want it to be um, very accessible on browsers and, and low-end devices. Um, and then the options there are basically, there's 3JS and there's a bunch of very big blockchain games that use it. Um, one example is um, our competitor Zedron on Ethereum and, and they use 3JS as far as I know. Then Babylon mm. JS is an, an alternative to that, which we think is actually much more solid from our experience. Um, it basically works very well with um, GLTF file formats. Um, it's very good at optimization. It just takes out a lot of the work that's needed for this. We could have went with Unreal or Unity. That's an, a very early question we had of, do we use a game engine? Um, for our application, it's not really, um, let's say, required because the interactions at the time of the race are relatively limited. We don't need a lot of AI logic, and that will just be more baggage that will, be, that will make basically the application heavier um, when we actually need it to be very optimal. So if our interactions are primarily viewing, um, Babylon.js and these similar WebGL apps are pretty good with interactivity. They're good at camera interactions and they even have um, like proper interactive games that use it even when you control a character and so on. But it's more, let's say, optimal for um, viewer experiences. And it just matches very well for that. So we decided to go the let's say less complex, but more effective route. And that's where we ended up. In some cases, Unity is probably the best option. Some other cases, Unreal might fit. Um, some cases, WebGL is just enough and, and, and works. So we'd rather keep it simple and effective in this regard, um, just seems to work out. That's perfect. I love the concept, simple and effective. Awesome. So I'm going to turn it over to Future Fest. Um, I'm just kind of want to ask you guys just um, where do you guys see the future of gaming for Cardano? I think uh, I think the future of gaming is pretty bright. I think everybody's really enjoying the whole, uh, you know, play to earn and especially the metaverse. You know, everybody's really, really looking forward to all those things. I think we're very early, very, very early. I mean, uh, you know, people still don't know that Cardano has NFTs. Um, and so, you know, getting to the, like, Cardano has games and Cardano has a metaverse. And, like, that's going to take time to, to grow that awareness. But I do think that every, every month I start meeting, I meet another project that's working on a game. Every month I meet another project that's thinking about how to integrate NFTs into their games. Um, and then... It, the the news just for crypto in general is bullish. Everybody's getting into it. It's it's huge. I heard a statistic the other day that said uh, thirty percent of millennials uh, earn, have crypto. They hold crypto. And I remember when I uh, when I first got into crypto, uh, you know that percentage was like three percent. So it that makes me really excited for the future. It makes me really excited for the future of gaming, and it makes me really excited for Cardano because I think every day. People realize that Cardano is a, a legit, <laughs> like a legitimate blockchain that can be built on, and you know it's still growing. And I'm just thankful to be here um, this early. And and hopefully, if if anyone has any questions for Future Fest about um, any advice, I mean, we're always open to to speaking to anybody and you know and having your answers, having answers to your questions. So, yeah. awesome, appreciate that. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it over as well to Equans. Like, what do you see? I see the future of uh, Cardano for gaming. Um, I think uh, Pablo didn't leave much to say, but basically, um, so NFTs are a component. Web 3.0, the concept of um, it, it just makes a lot of sense. The story of um, the web being 
read only and then the, the web having read and write and people basically contributing and adding things to the web um, with blogs and Tumblr and then Instagram and social media. And then the concept of web 3.0 and people owning stuff. And this whole disruptive technology, and I will call it this disruptive, is people should basically own their digital items. And NFT technology is basically changing the way that people are owning digital items. And, and it's an alternative to all other kinds of digital rights management, which is much more decentralized and it just opens up so many doors. So this just adds so much to games as well. And it makes it much more accessible. Um, why do people need to use um, third party platforms to launch their games today? One of the main reasons is that they take those platforms, take care of some of the components like publishing the game, like selling the game, uh, like having the, the, the account management and all of that. But when you start having two types of games, one that lets you own your stuff and lets you own and take control of them, and another type of game which doesn't, obviously, with time, people will realize how much freedom they get from the, the types that allows you. So think of the, um, I won't mention any game names, but think of your accounts of games that you spent maybe tens of dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars on things in the game. And remember that today they are locked. You cannot do anything else with them. You own them, you can either give up your account, you can go to a, um, a gray or black market and sell it illegally because it's always against the terms of service to sell your account. And I'm not advising anyone to do that. Or you just spend that money for a digital item and, and that's it, okay? And you enjoy it and that's it. And then look at the other future where you spent maybe $100 or $1,000 on, on, on game items, which you enjoyed, but it also gives you an option if you ever don't want an item for some reason, you can don't have to compromise your whole account in the game. You can just sell that one item or you can at least gift it to a friend and you don't need to go through the game or the game to bound you to an item. Some games have trading, some games have selling function, but usually it's limited. Some things will be more limited, some things will be less. But, but, but my point here is that it's very liberating for the players. Um, I think it's just people need to understand and the players to understand that this is groundbreaking and if done right. It hasn't been done right, maybe only by a few. Uh, maybe more negative interactions than positive still, but I think this will eventually change with bigger players also getting onto the game. Um, some people misunderstand and say, oh, well, I'm not a trader. I don't want to invest. It doesn't have to be that. It's just an option. You can do more. You can just do the same. So uh, I think this very disruptive technology. I think even the, the standard understanding of gaming will be changed. It's, it's, it's going to be a standard eventually. Um, Cardano and the future of gaming on Cardano, it's it being an alternative. Nowadays, you see that Ethereum is probably the biggest, let's say, most mainstream um, option. Um, but I think the moment we have more scaling on Cardano, the ease of use to be a bit more developed, um, that will be the only key required. We already have a very huge user base. We already have a massive community. Um, I think it's just uh, um, a few, let's say, optimizations away from much bigger adoption. Um, so I think the future is going to be big. Awesome. Appreciate that. Um, for, for Equines, is there anything? And then after that, we're, we're just going to go into uh, pretty much closing and last, last remarks. Perfect. I'd love, love to show. Tell, tell us a little bit about, about your website and what, what, what we're looking at. So, so, so this is actually our um, website as of today. So this is um, pretty outdated. Once we have the game and web app up, um, it will replace all of this and we'll have the proper game interfaces. So this is what we have at least to share now what Equine um, looked like at the time of sale and beyond that. Um, so this is a visual of an Equine horse and, and, and how it's in a, in a render. And it just explains how it's a, it's a horse racing, breeding and trading game where you can do all of these. Um, and then it explains about the race horses. This is what our horses looks like. There's a lot of variety in colors. 
uh, but they are all thoroughbred horses. Um, we want basically to cater to the um, race horse um, or horse lovers. We didn't decide to do um, all kinds of breeds and then basically horse racing usually only use a certain breed and we want to be true to that. We do have other horses shown, but those are basically used as skins. So they're more of a cosmetic. Um, and then we have jockeys and these are original characters which have names and they have original music. They have their own costumes and they have their backstories. So eventually these characters will have also more development. They have stories um, and they have interactions and so on. This is something for later, but for now, jockeys will be riding the horses and they will affect the horse performance in a race. And it's part of the strategy of the game is to choose basically what jockey you want to use. They have different personalities uh, to affect the horses. And this is just a sample. So we have Yukio, who is actually a Japanese jockey. We have uh, Cornelius here, we have Anara, we have Malik. There are 10 jockeys which are part of the Pioneer Collection. The Pioneer Collection was already sold on 18th of December. Um, and there were 14,125 Pioneer bundles sold. Um, so that means 14,125 jockeys exist from the Pioneer Collection. Um, in the future, we do plan to release different jockeys as future seasons, but these are the pioneers. These are the legendary jockeys, I would say, in terms of the storyline, um, which you see here. Um, breeding explains that this is Mendelian genetics. They will be realistic. Their, each horse will have their parents' genetics and DNA, uh, and then their offspring will carry their uh, basic traits. A good breeder will be able to produce horses which are better than the parents um, through focused breeding program planning and through learning about their horses. This is a good point to talk about the life cycle. This might be a shock to some people if they don't know about the game concept, but the horses actually age and they grow and they die. So the horses start young and then they grow every year. Their stats will grow. And then after they finish 18 years of horse life, which is 18 months in real life, they would pass away. And after the horse dies, you will keep a ghost or a trophy NFT. You will remember the horse, but you cannot trace them. You cannot breed them anymore because the horse is considered uh, passed away or expired. So this is a very interesting dynamic. We thought makes a lot of sense because that means if you have a champion who is dominating every race, even in that case, you still have to either breed that horse or you'll know that that legacy will finish. And somebody else always has a chance. There will always be a new change of the blood of horses that exists. And there's always a dynamic, let's say, um, economy of horses. Um, so it's an interesting concept, which I think all our fans enjoy a lot. After we introduced it, we weren't sure how will people feel about their NFT dying, but then we learned that it's actually very interesting. Everybody enjoys it as a concept. It makes a lot of sense. And um, it does mean that the utility of the horse is limited in terms of racing and breeding, but it's a decision everyone would take when they buy their horse. Um, also for the record, so while the game is not live yet, none of the horses are aging. The aging will only start after the platform and the game is open and it will not automatically happen for everyone, only if you activate your horse in the game. So if you don't activate it, it will stay two years old for until you activate it. And the statistics that you see on any equine horse, it will also evolve with time. So if they have certain speed or stamina or endurance, that will also change. So for a two year old horse, there are some numbers but if it's three years old, four years old, you'll see these numbers change. And maybe a weak horse today can be a very strong horse tomorrow. So it's also another point that people should, should keep in mind. Awesome. And this is a description of some of the stats. And you can see that on our website. Then we have the collectibles, which are the skins. There are some interesting and fun ideas. So we have, um, for example, demon skin. We have a skeleton skin. We have alien skins. And, and, and the idea of the skins is to have more collectibles and cosmetics 
Um, they don't change the performance. They're a collectible in the series. Um, and you can turn them off. If you like to look at pure race, like a real race, you just tick one box or toggle it to classic mode. If you're on classic mode, you look at a normal standard race. If you turn off classic mode, you can see all the funny skins and what they look like, and you can show off your rare skins. And every player can choose to look at classic mode or the standard mode. So this is the roadmap as of today. We are uh, looking forward to a third quarter platform launch. So by September, hopefully, this might get an update. If it does get an update, we'll share this with everyone. By the time um, this uh, um, is public, it uh, will probably be updated with more details. <clears throat> this is the team. This is the four of us as the founders. This is the larger team, but this is a summary of um, who's on board. And then we basically have our white paper with many, many, many more details. If you are interested, you can have a look at the white paper and it describes all the game mechanics in detail. You can look at the jockeys, the personality types, and you can learn about the game. If you want to get an equine NFT right now, the only NFTs that are out are the Pioneer Collection. You can buy them from any of the Cardano NFT marketplaces. And they're already sold out from our side. We will have the owners basically breeding new horses when the platform is up. But for now, the only option is the Pioneer Collection, um, which is already out there and on the third party marketplaces. Um, you can also learn about the, the credits for the team who produced the Pioneer Collection. We have a page dedicated to them, which lists all of the artists. If you're interested in the art, and want to see um, what the, uh, the guys who, who actually made this art, you can even see some of their other creations. It's just a, a, an homage to all those who created these. You can even listen to our uh, composer's music. And we basically have these credits you can even see about these different projects. Um, so this is our website. It's equine.gg, very simple. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I look forward to everyone who is interested to join us. Uh, we are also on Discord at discord.gg slash equine. Discord.gg slash equine will take you to our Discord server if you are interested. Awesome. Well, thank you. Love love the visuals and love showcasing the, the thing, the things you're, you're, you're doing. And well, thank you so much. Um, so for Future Fest, any, any last words and tell us, can you, can you tell us where people can find you guys? So um, I always urge, uh, you know, anyone that's interested in FutureFest, check out our site at futurefest.io. We have plenty of our work there, our past shows um, that people can actually view. Um, we have a, a very visual white paper there as well that uh, is super easy to read. Um, so please check out all our details there. We do have a show. Actually, let me just share my screen. We've got our first exclusive show coming up on April 14th Ooh. with Cascade. So uh, you will need an NFT to... Uh, get into that event. Also, uh, we're going to have the first Cascade CNFT launched or uh, as a as an airdrop to all our Deluxe Future Bot holders. So get in on that. If you're unaware can. who Cascade is, uh, Cascade is a multi Grammy nominated EDM legend. This guy, uh, I think he was the number one DJ in the world in 2017. He's released 11 studio albums. He's a uh, He's definitely someone that we I grew up listening to yeah. when I was in college, and uh, we're just so happy to be able to work with him. And on top of it, we're bringing him to uh, you know a Cardano audience. Um, the attention that this man has, you know, over a million followers across all his platforms. Uh, we're hoping that that will bring light to what's happening on Cardano and CNFTs, and will help elevate all the projects on Cardano as well. But that's just our first event. We still have two more events happening later this year with two more A-list artists. So uh, please go to futurefest.io to find out more about us. Um, I think Matt is showing off our previous work if you're also interested. Yeah, we have a we have a ton of work on here, so you can actually view full shows that we've done with our, our past audiences and uh, kind of like some of the cool interactions we've had. So that's always great. Um, like I said, our white paper, 
super visual, so it should be a very easy read and also does a very good job of kind of explaining what we're all about. So I always urge our uh, viewers to check that out too. Um, anything awesome. else, Pablo? Yeah. Um, you know, um, follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at FutureFest XR, and most of the information is being posted there. Um, I know you said this would probably come out later on in May. So this is probably a good time to plug that we are doing a Future Friends Music Festival with uh, five other projects, which could be uh, Space Yacht, our very good friends at Space Yacht, uh, the Benjamins Group, Veggie Mates, Angel Baby Hit Squad, Soho Kids. And those individual projects are going to act, those entities are going to act as tickets to get into the show. It's six weeks. Um, every week we're going to be having a show and each project is going to be highlighting some uh, performers for you guys to enjoy. You guys can run around as future bots and you guys can get a free sweet in-game item if you own one of the uh, projects NFTs. So uh, come to futurefest.io, go to check us out on Twitter, futurefestxr. Come see what we're doing, come see some of our shows. If you're interested, pick up an NFT so you can uh, have a personalized future bot for yourself. And we hope uh, that you guys have enjoyed you know, learning a little bit more about us. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate both of you guys coming on to this CMT Japan Festival. Um, this is a big thing that we're trying to do, just bridging the gap between uh, Japanese audience and the Western audience and just doing it through CNFTs and art is just the, the biggest you know, vision so we can essentially bridge that language barrier. So thank you so much for joining us um, from, from these amazing projects. Please go check them out. Um, I'm Vic from Hidden Order. Uh, this is CNT Festival Japan. This is the end of the game conference. And hopefully you can tune us next time when we um, do some more conferences as well. So thank you so much.